Greetings, everybody. This is Clothes from Heaven, How to Access Heaven. Well, I had a dream some time ago, and I dreamt that I saw Jesus. And he was walking up this mountain, and I began to follow him. And I followed him quite a way, and the path started to get steeper and more and more rocky. And I started to puff to keep up, but Jesus was walking with such ease. Anyway, I carried on walking and walking. I didn't dare look left nor right. I just kept my eyes on him so that he would not get out of sight. And slowly, slowly, we got up this mountain and I'm puffing more and more and we reached the top and Jesus sat down on this beautiful marble rock and I could at last catch up with him. He smiled to me, but I was too shy to touch him or anything. I just fell on my knees and bowed my head to worship him and as my forehead touched that cold white marble. I suddenly woke up. I did not want to wake up. I wanted to be with Jesus. Jesus was calling me into the ministry at that time. And I thought to myself, does this mean that the ministry will get harder and harder and steeper and steeper? But I need to keep my eyes on Jesus. And I have from that time. Yet, there seemed to be something more. And the Lord led me to the scriptures. Luke 17, 20 to 21. Now when he was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, he answered and said, The kingdom of God does not come with observation, nor will they say, See here or see there. For indeed, the kingdom of God is within you. Now how can the kingdom of God be within you? The scripture speaks of the kingdom of God being within us. Mm -hmm brought into us by the Holy Spirit, whom we receive from God. And when we receive the Holy Spirit, Romans 8 speaks about the difference that the Holy Spirit makes within us, compared with just the human mind, without the Holy Spirit. If we read, Romans 8, 1 to 4, it says, There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. The law of the Spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. For God has done what the law weakened by the flesh could not do. By sending his own son in the likeness of sin for flesh and for sin, he condemned sin in the flesh, in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us. He walked not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. This is speaking about two different realms, one of the world and one of the spirit from the heavenly kingdom. There's no condemnation if we live in, from the heavenly realm. And this verse goes on to say that this is possible through what Jesus did on the cross for us to make it possible for us to live fully in the spirit rather than in the flesh. Romans 8, 5 to 14. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. 
To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God, for it does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. You, however, are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. In fact, the spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is life because of righteousness. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give you life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. So then, brothers, we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the spirit of God are sons of God. These verses describe the difference. Are we going to do the things of the flesh in our lives? Or are we going to resist the wants of the flesh to rather live in righteousness to the call of the Holy Spirit within us? The difference is enormous. The deeds of the flesh point to death, whereas the deeds of the Spirit point to everlasting life because we've become sons of God. A lot of us have already been baptized in the Holy Spirit, but there's more to it than simply being baptized in the Holy Spirit. We need to yield to Christ through the leading of his Holy Spirit within us and open ourselves to the leading of the Holy Spirit to enable us to focus on Jesus and follow Jesus closely. If we don't follow Jesus closely, we will lose sight of him and find ourselves getting lost. And that reminded me of how I had to keep my eyes on Jesus as he walked up the mountain. Romans 8, 15 to 19 goes on to show us the results of living in the Spirit. In the heavenly realm, we become sons and daughters of God. Romans 8, 15 to 19. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back and flee here, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons by whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children hairs, hairs of God and fellow hairs with Christ, provided we suffer with him in order that we may also be glorified with him. For I consider that the sufferings of these present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the sons of God. When we choose to receive what Jesus has done for us on the cross, we become reborn to eternal life, to the kingdom of heaven, to then live in and from the heavenly realm. The heavenly realm given to us by the Holy Spirit, whom we receive to live within us and enables us to become sons and daughters of God. When we become sons and daughters of God, we also become heirs of our inheritance of Jesus Christ through our Lord and Savior. And no wonder the scripture goes on to say that through suffering we may have to endure in the worldly realm, mm. is not comparable with the glory which is perfected in us. Yes, yeah. mm. Thank you. And Romans 8, 20-24 says, For the creation was subject to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it, 
in hope that creation itself would be set free from its bondage to decay and obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. Mm. For we know that the whole creation has been groaning together in the pains of childbirth mm. until now. And not only creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, grown inwardly as we wait eagerly for the adoptions of sons, the redemption of our body. For this hope, we are saved. Mm. So God chooses us through his own goodness and mercy. Mm. He calls us through the gospel. He justifies us through faith. And he glorifies us through good works. Yeah. So, how do we enter his kingdom? Number one, repent. Yeah. Matthew 4, 17. From that time, Jesus began to preach, saying, Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. Mm -hmm. So we need to repent of all sin. Mm -hmm. We see Jesus as Lord and Savior and get baptized in water. Yes. Two, be born again by being baptized in the Holy Spirit. Yes. John 3.3, 3. Jesus answered him, Truly, truly, I say unto you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. John 3, verse 6, He who is born of flesh is flesh, and he who is born of spirit is spirit. Mm -hmm. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, mm -hmm. and you hear its sound. Mm -hmm. But you do not know where it comes from yes. or where it goes. Mm -hmm. So it is with everyone who is born of the spirit. Mm -hmm. Three, serve the Lord. Acts 1.8 but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and unto the ends of the earth. And Ephesians 6, 10 to 18. As you serve the Lord and the power of the Holy Spirit, you also need to live in the armor of God daily. And here you can read Ephesians 10 to 18. But I will not be reading it now. It's the armor of God. I have done a teaching on that. Mm. Do look it up and see this for yourselves. Four, develop your spiritual qualities. 2 Peter 1, 5 to 11. For this reason, make every effort to supplement your faith with virtue and virtue with knowledge and knowledge with self-control and self-control with steadfastness, mm -hmm. and steadfastness with godliness, and godliness with bro brotherly affection, and brotherly affection with love. But if these qualities are yours and are increasing, they keep you from being ineffective or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Whoever lacks these qualities are so nearsighted that he's blind, mm -hmm. having forgotten that he is cleaned from his former sins. Therefore, brothers, be all the more diligent to make your calling and election sure. Mm -hmm. For if you practice these qualities, you will never fail. Yes. For in this way, there will be richly provided for you an inheritance into the kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Faith with virtue means excellence of Christian character. Mm -hmm. Virtue with knowledge speaks of intelligence and self-control mm -hmm. with steadfastness, patience, mm -hmm. endurance that leads to godliness, brotherly kindness and love. And number five, love God. And it is also wonderful that anyone can enter in. It doesn't matter how rich or poor you are, as these worldly things have nothing to do with the heavenly realm. Yes. It is rather that we love God mm -hmm. and want to develop our spiritual qualities because we love Him. Mm -hmm. 
James 2.5 Listen, my beloved brethren, has not God chosen those who are poor in the world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom which he has promised to those who love him? Recently, I watched a video of a baby bear and learnt something from the baby bear. The bear had lost its parents. The zoo took it in and gave the bear toys to play with. But the bear got bored. Seeing this, the zoo decided to let the bear loose on the grounds and see what it would do. And the baby bear went round trying to find a friend. At first he was met with rejection from some of the animals and then he met up with an Alsatian dog and the dog was willing to play with the baby bear. But the dog had been brought up by humans and had been introduced to play with sticks and balls. <laughs> but the bear was not interested in sticks and balls. He just wanted a friend. Oh. After a while, the Alsatian understood. And then they found fun simply playing with one another. Oh. The moral was love and friendship yes. is more important yes. than possessions. Yes. <laughs> and the, from this, I also saw that the fruit of the Spirit mm. is the currency of heaven. Mm not money yeah. or possessions, mm -hmm. which is a currency of this world. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Sometimes watching animals yes. teaches you yeah. a lot. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> After all, money cannot buy love mm -hmm. or peace mm -hmm. or joy. Money cannot replace kindness mm -hmm. or compassion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm or humbleness, or patient, or any other fruit of the Spirit. This is why the scripture says, Seek ye the kingdom of heaven, yeah. not the things of the earth. Yeah. And number six, endure to the end. Revelation 20, verse 12. And I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne, and the books were opened. Then another book was opened, which was a book of life, and the dead were judged by what was written in the books yes. according to what they had done. And number seven, stand fast in the Lord. Yes. 1 Thessalonians 3, 8. For now we live, if we are standing fast in the Lord. And this short verse sums it up. If we are standing in the Lord and for the Lord in these times where persecution is rising daily against us believers, we will live. Amen. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. renew a right spirit within me. 